Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Ryan here. Hope you guys are doing okay. Today we're going to be reacting to Moonlight Chicken, episode number 6. But before we start, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss my next video. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and start. I remember. Yes, they can. That was so sad. This whole scene was really sad. I want to know what's going through Uncle Jim's mind right here. What's the plan? <laughs> what are we doing? Seems happy. Yes, you. Yeah, I think the fact that he moved out. Yeah, exactly. He's already a, a huge deal. Just to kind of remove himself from that situation. Exactly. And the fact that Uncle Jim took him in with no hesitation. That's nice. That's nice of him. Exactly. What is the plan? He's so much sure. I love it. I like that. They've already, you know, establishing expectations. You can stay here, but you need to find a place. And we'll talk then. That's nice. Okay. 
ินง่ายอยู่ง่ายแล้วยังไม่ยากหรอกเออลุงแล้วเรียนอีกนะ He's too mad. Uh oh. What I have? Hey, how are you about? How are you here? Uh oh. Hey, good body. Ah, we eat together, right? Not a problem, Lung. Don't eat. He's working on it. If you knew sign language, you would have understood that. ก็คุยกับคนที่นั
านครับคุยเก่งมากมากเลยนะป้าอีกอย่างเขาดูแบบดูมีความสุขแบบมากๆเลยครับอิทส์โซ่คราซี่ที่ another kid had to tell her this about her own son and she doesn't know much about him I think that's what it was, you know. I think they were just worried about him, but just the way they went about it could have been much, much better. Oh. Good. Ask for permission. Poor guy, he's back in his room again. <laughs> it's so sad that that's how she used to communicate with him. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> He's so mature. He went to their house, apologized, and explained himself. Oh. He's good. Jam. Jam and James. 
มันน่าจะส่งข่าวกันมันดีมันบอกว่าตัวสองคนหอตัวรอดเก่ง Where is she again? Here we go. All right, let's go. So this time he already knew. It's more important than Jim. You're still leaving.
That's hard. Jim. So now you know. Wow, I had no idea that's what happened. That's terrible.
มว่าคนไปยื่นที่สาขาอื่นไปก็ธนาคารอื่นก็นะครับนี่นามบัตรของฝ่ายสินเชื่อตลาดหนักคือครับคุณลองโทรไปคุยดูแล้วกันไ
เป็นไงบ้างวะให้กูไปอยู่กับเพื่อนไหมมึงไม่ต้องห่วงลุงเขาหรอกห่วงตัวเองกันปะแค่นี้ก่อนนะมึงลุงถามได้ดิลุงพูดชื่อหน่อยไก่ป่าไปแล้วหรอขึ้นไปแล้วลุงขึ้นทำไมผมไม่เข้าใจไอ้ไก่ป่ามันรู้ว่ายังไงอ่ะพูดอย่างนั้นเหรอแต่เรื่องฉนวนกับเรื่องไก่ป่ามันคนละเรื่องอะบัวลุงเป็นอย่างนี้ไรกูไม่อยากเอาความรู้สึกของคนอื่นอะไปใช้ประโยชน์วะไรกูก็ไม่เห็นกับตัวไปหน่อยลุงถ้าคนเรามาเข้าตาจนมันก็เห็นกับตัวกันเป็นเรื่องปกติว่าลุงสัตว์ตาเดสเปรดเข้าตาจนแต่มันต้องมีศักดิ์ศรีตัวไว้เล้งมึงลองคิดดูนะว่าถ้าเป็นมึงเองมึงก็ไม่อยากให้ใครทำแบบนี้กับมึงเป็นกันเออแล้วยังไงต่อจะหาเงินที่ไหนมาจ่ายเขาวะเดี๋ยวกูจะคุยกับที่บ้านก่อน He's gonna ask for help What Mr Independent Your moment. Hello, Jay. Jay, Paul, Jay, Michelle, Jay, Paul, Jay, Paul. I'm gonna get a second. I love decorating. I just don't like taking them down. <laughs> Still trying, huh? Yes.
Now it is. Do it. Not yet. It's not ready. Oh, this totally reminds me of their bike ride in A Tale of a Thousand Stars. <laughs> it cheat! That's cute. He took him there. That was quick, hold on. Wow, 34 years old. How are you know you're in He really loved him. In spite of what he did, he's still here. Visiting him. She would not be alone on the team. Right. Would you two still be together if you were still alive? You know? Would he want to? Mm. never even tried to find out about her. Okay. Beautiful beach.
he's located her. I wonder what made him ultimately agree. Does she know of him? Mm. Mm. Huh? Oh my god. Right. He was a side guy. And he didn't even know about it. Right. But he couldn't. They're such adults. I love it. Wait. 
ดีคุณลุงก่อนนะสวัสดีค่ะลุงเก็บมาตั้งไปนะค่ะ Is that beam skin? Oh. Oh my God. He needed this. Oh God, he needed this. Louder. his parents, his mom's permission to bring him home.
Jimbo. Jimbo. <laughs> Jimbo's like, poke me down. Oh. It's the first time you're hearing his voice. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Uncle Jade. He's grown.
What's happening? This is complex. Wow, you can't end this here like that. Huh? Mama? Finally, know what happened between Jim and Beam. So it turns out that Beam was in a relationship with another person, but with a twist. I guess Jim was the side dude. What? Looking back, it makes sense now that Beam still decided to leave Jim at the port, even though Beam seemed to be having difficulty leaving Jim. He still felt that it was important for him to leave him and go home. Now it makes sense to me. He and Quan had been in a relationship for much longer. They actually met in college and their, their dads were close. But I guess Beam and Quan were having a relationship issues when Beam met Jim. But unfortunately, he did what he did and he didn't really have the chance to fix his growing issues because he unfortunately passed during a boat accident. And Jim was understandably devastated when he learned about Beam passing because even though they had just fought, even though he had just recently discovered that he was seeing another person he still loved Beam so much they shared so many moments together Beam was there when he started his business he probably thought Beam was the one so seeing him there lifeless I can't even imagine the emotions that Jim must have been feeling during that moment as he was walking towards Beam's lifeless cold body I can't and I can imagine Beam's passing being especially difficult for Jim because not only that he loved Beam but he also didn't get the explanation that he was probably hoping for from Beam you know for doing what he did. I can imagine Uncle Jim feeling betrayed and not really getting the proper closure. It was kind of interesting and sad at the same time that Uncle Jim seemingly taking part of the blame for what happened to Beam that day. When he was telling Wen about what happened, he said that had he only made a bigger fight that day that he probably would have or could have prevented Beam from boarding the ferry and that Beam would essentially still be alive today. Um, we know that it's not his fault and I'm glad that Wynn reassured him and told him that really it wasn't your fault. And because Jim didn't really get the proper closure and Beam is no longer here to answer any of his questions, Jim feels like he's totally in the dark about the authenticity of feelings and the love that he thought they both shared. Was any of that true? Was any of that real? And more to the point, did I take him from her? And those are really valid questions and they really show the maturity level of Jim's character. In spite of the pain and the loss that he's going through, he was able to reflect on the situation and even entertain the idea that maybe he wasn't the only partner. That must have been very difficult to process and let alone to come to terms with. That in spite of everything that you two have gone through, all the memories that you two created, that 
there's a possibility that, you know, you weren't the only one that he was seeing. That's gotta hurt. And as much as he wants more clarity and more answers, unfortunately, he's never gonna get him because Beam's gone. So now Jim probably feels betrayed, confused, lost, hurt, guilty, even humiliated, all these kinds of emotions. And that is a lot to process. Now it makes sense. Now I understand why his walls are so high up. You know, he doesn't want any complications or further complications, I should say. He doesn't want any strings attached. He was already going through so much internally. So uh, he's literally up here. There's no more room for any additional baggage. And what makes his situation even more difficult, at least for me, if I was in his shoes, is that not only that he was already dealing with so much, but it seemed like he was dealing with all of that on his own. He really didn't seem like he was talking to other people about it. He just kind of kept all of that in to himself. So knowing more about Jim and Beam's past and Beam being in a relationship with another woman, I'm actually surprised that Jim continued to entertain Wynn even after learning about Alan. I mean granted Wynn was very persistent and he continued to insist that he and Alan were done but given his previous experience I wouldn't think that he would be interested in any of that. Like, I, I wouldn't think that he would want to go through another one of those again, you know? But but I am happy though that Wynn is in Jim's life right now. Even after learning about Jim's past and his experience with Beam, I like that Wynn continued to, again, stay and express his interest in wanting to help Jim process all these things that were probably keeping Jim from moving forward. He suggested that Jim should meet and talk to Quan, even though Jim initially didn't see the point of even trying to reach out to his ex's ex. You know, it really shows how much he really genuinely likes Jim and how much he really wants to take care of him as well. This is one of the things that I really admire about Wynn. You know, he's a very good listener and he really knows how to, for the most part, take the proper steps to resolve any issues of other people. I'm glad that Jim went anyway, even though, again, he really didn't see the point of it or he didn't understand how he was gonna benefit the situation, but I'm glad that he went anyway. And then when they finally met, I thought they were both very mature about it and they carried themselves in, in such a way that was actually very refreshing. They were such adults about it. And I really have to give credit to Quan for even agreeing to meet with Jim. You know, the person that Beam was seeing while he was still with her, not only that she agreed to meet with Jim, but she also gave Jim the opportunity to ask questions. What do you want to know? Such a mature way to handle the situation and what a class act. And I was immediately a fan of hers. <laughs> I think this conversation was very good for both of them, but especially for Jim. And I also thought that Quan was very genuine and honest about her responses. And she even told him, you know, I don't know if these are the answers you're looking for, but that's what happened, take it or leave it. And I also liked that she really didn't blame Jim for what happened between her and Beam. I know that she admitted that she was furious at one point but she never did once say that Jim was partly to blame for what happened between her and Beam. I respect that. I really do. I love this character so much because even though she was in so much pain and I'm sure she might still be grieving, she was so calm and so composed while talking to Jim. Even though she was at one point again pissed off that Beam was with Jim, she doesn't seem like she's holding any grudges, you know? Granted, she's in a much better place now, but she could've easily just ignored Jim and not even meet up with him. But the fact that, again, she did, and she allowed him to ask any questions he may have and shared her experience while she was in a relationship with Beam, knowing that Beam was also seeing Jim. And I also like what she said towards the end of her conversation with Jim, when she said that she had stopped dwelling on what happened in the past. Instead, she's more focused on her present life and who's in it and how happy and content she is with her present life. And then she glanced over to her daughter and I think Jim seeing that made him realize that maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to let go of some of the things that he couldn't let go of because he really didn't know how to process them yet or he hadn't had a chance to process them yet. But I think hearing those words from Quan and seeing how happy Quan is with her current life now in spite of her past with Beam, I think that kind of helped Jim realize that maybe it was time to let go of certain things that 
was holding him back that happened to him in the past. And I thought Jim really needed to hear that and there was no better person to hear that from than Quan. And I say that because in a way they could relate to each other. You know, they, they once loved the same man, the same person and they've also lost the same person. So again, in a way, they could empathize with each other to some degree. Yeah, I think this conversation was necessary. I think this conversation was very, or at least to me anyway, it seemed therapeutic for both of them. I think some people grieve differently and maybe they're both still grieving over the loss of the person that they both once loved. So having this kind of conversation with each other kind of gave them that closure. And I love watching Jim's facial expression towards the end of their conversation. Seeing his face kind of lit up after their conversation, I could feel this really heavy weight seemingly being lifted off of his shoulder. It was nice to see him smile, genuinely smile. And I also like that Uncle Jim acknowledged Wen's involvement and his role and contribution to helping him get to this point, you know, because had he not met him that one night when he passed out at his restaurant, I don't think Jim would be here and he even acknowledged that. And I like that he included him in his family with Ling and Li Ming. I think it's sweet. I think when earned that spot. Now Jim just seems more relaxed. He just seems more open to exploring, you know, the possibilities of being with Wynn. But I am worried about Alan though, and especially what happened towards the end of this episode. He seems to be having difficulty dealing with the breakup. And I like that Jim reassured Wynn that it was okay for him to stay because he understood how much Alan needs him now. And also given his past with Beam, Jim understands the severity of the situation. and. He he even told Wynn, if I were you, I would stay too. So it's okay, you can stay. Almost like reassuring him that, yeah, you can stay and I trust you. I mean, granted, they're not dating exclusively yet, but it seems like they're heading in that direction. So I guess in a way, this specific moment is, is kind of like a putting their relationship to the test, see if they can survive this challenge. And that scene with Guy Fa when he finally found the courage to semi-confess his feelings to Uncle Jim it made me sad because it seemed like Gaipa was expecting or at least was hoping for a different answer but he got the answer that he got even though it wasn't the response that he was expecting or he was hoping he really still tried to you know put a smile on his face and tried not to make a big deal out of the situation I wanted to give him a hug I wanted to just tell him it's okay <laughs> there's someone else out there for you I'm sure that must have been hard to hear but I'm glad that he was finally able to express how he felt about Uncle Jim to Uncle Jim so at least now he knows and I also like that Uncle Jim was very honest, even though his response was very brief, but it was very honest, genuine, and really didn't sugarcoat anything. And I think Gaipa needed to hear that. You know, he needed to hear an honest, genuine response. Now Gaipa knows how Uncle Jim feels about him and vice versa. I'm just hoping that they'll both move on and continue to be friends. And then Liming made me so proud here. I was so proud to see him personally speak with Hart's mom and apologize for taking Hart out of their house without their permission. I know that Hart's parents ultimately wanted to protect Hart and kept him at home because they didn't want anything bad to happen to him. But by doing so, it also hurt Hart and it kind of deprived him from doing many things. So I was so happy and so proud of Liming for being so mature about this whole thing and taking responsibilities for his actions and learning from this mistake. And I also like that Linning was telling Hart's mom of all the things that they've done together and all the things that he's learned about Hart by just simply talking to him. And I hope that this encourages Hart's mom to learn sign language this time around so she wouldn't have to rely on Linning to tell her about her own son. She also won't have to rely on living to really engage in meaningful conversations with, again, her own son. All those wonderful things that living learned about Hart was through talking to him. So if Hart's parents really want him to believe that they care about what he has to say, I think it's safe to say that they need to learn how to speak in sign language and meet him halfway. I'm excited for Hart and living. It seems like they've gotten to know each other better and now they're displaying their attraction and affection towards each other through kissing. You know, we got a kiss here. But I am kind of worried though that Uncle Jim may not necessarily be on board with 
living and heart's relationship at this moment. And if I remember correctly, I think Uncle Jim mentioned something to his sister a few episodes ago that he was going to prove to her that same-sex relationship existed. So with that being said, I'm kind of curious to see or to know the extent of Uncle Jim's experience growing up being attracted to the same sex and also wanted to know at least how his family or those people around him how they viewed you know same-sex relationships or gay people in general because his reaction to seeing living and heart kissing that came from somewhere. I'm hoping that he wasn't bullied, but I feel like he had a negative experience growing up as somebody who is attracted to men. So I'm curious to know how much of that they're gonna be exploring or if they're gonna show any of that at all, but it just made me sad that he was almost discouraging, at least based on the preview, it almost feels like he was discouraging limbing from pursuing heart. You're not only poor, but now you're gay. Like pick a struggle, you know? I'm hoping that he's just being carried away by his emotions and he really doesn't mean that because it's kind of sad to tell your nephew who to some degree looks up to you that being gay is something that is to be ashamed of. Anyway, what did you think of this episode? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for being here and thank you for your time. Before you go, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss my next video. Until then, I'll see you later.